Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel where today we're going to be playing a shorter scenario from Panzer's Last Stand, part of the Battalion Combat series. I don't know how much of this scenario I'm going to get done, but we're going to try to see um, what we can do. We're going to be doing scenario 5.3, Operation Conrad 1. And so basically what's happening is the German forces in um, late 1944 were surrounded in Budapest by the Red Army and in early 1945 uh, Hitler ordered his armies especially the SS Panzer divisions to try to relieve the forces besieged in Budapest who are uh, basically way over there and that operation was Operation Conrad 1 and 2 so Comrade 1 was launched in the late evening of January 1st, 1945, with enemy contact around midnight. The operation made initial progress by the two SS Panzer Divisions and the 96th Infantry Division before the Soviet defenses hardened by pulling formations from across the front. Stalemated after a few days, the Germans launched Operation Conrad 2 effectively as a continuation of their offensive from the progress already made towards Budapest, and both operations failed. So over here, we have the 5th SS Panzer Division and the 3rd SS Panzer Division, along with the 96th Infantry Division, and we have the Danube. And so what happens is on the night of um, New Year's Day, or um, we have the 96th Infantry Division crossing the Danube in their boats to attack the 4th Guards Division, and the two SS Panzer Divisions uh, move east from the town of Komarom. And so um, down here in Tata, we already have the SS uh, Recon Battalion uh, taking up positions there and ready to attack out of the town. And so basically what the Germans are trying to do is move east all the way over to Budapest. Sorry for the glare, which is down there. So you see they have quite a lot of um, real estate to cover here. Um, and there's a couple of victory hexes which are way off to the east. Um, I don't think we're going to get to them just because the amount of uh, units that the Germans have to beat their way through is kind of insurmountable. But it's still fun to throw around the SS Panzer divisions. Um, they have some fun units, they have some Tigers, a lot of Panzer, Divi uh, Panzer battalions. The combat is fun. Uh, if the uh, results are a bit one sided after the initial success. Usually, what happens is the SS units have no problem breaking through the first line, but then once we get up into these hills, um, they become bottlenecked and become kind of easier pickings for the Soviet reinforcements. So, sort of the basis for um, Panzer Last Stand is the allotment system, which is kind of confusing in the beginning, but basically um, the Playbook tells you how many allotments you get. So in the first day, for example, um, here in the Axis player book, it tells us that um, the primary allotment is one for the Germans and three secondary, whereas the Soviets have zero primary and one secondary allotment. So primary allotments have to be allotted, chosen, um, in the initial phase um, of the setup, or of the turn, sorry. So they have to be done in the pre-turn phase during the orders segment of the pre-turn phase. And so um, the primary, you have to choose which formations become primary, and you can't change them. And same thing, the secondary, secondary you don't have to choose beforehand, um, but you can't choose a primary, uh, a division that was chosen for the primary activation twice. Um, if a division gets attacked um, before it can activate, it gets sent down to the spoiled box, and they have to activate, um, essentially making sure that... Um, if they get surrounded, for example, they get they have to roll for or they have to check for isolation. They can't just not never activate and thus avoid the um, isolation penalties. So if you get attacked, you get a spoiled. Otherwise, you just um, pre-designate primaries 
and secondaries you can do it as the turn progresses um, so hopefully that's kind of an easy way to um, to view it or to think about it um, but I think once you when you read the rule book the first time it's kind of confusing but then once you get the activation displays out and kind of play through it it, it makes a lot of sense all right so what i've done is i've rolled for weather we rolled good weather so visibility is for traffic ability is good um, i rolled for the air points the axis get uh, three air points the soviets get a whopping 10 which i probably not use now, as I mentioned before, on the first night, the Axis activations get one primary allotment, which, as you see, has to be used for the 96th Infantry Division, and three secondary allotments. So we just put this up to three, and primary up to one, and the 96 has to be the primary, so it goes there. And now we have three secondary allotments, but we don't have to pre-designate them. So we don't need to put anything in tier two. Likewise, on the Soviet side, we have for January 2nd, two, or sorry, one secondary allotment. So we just move this up to one and we do not have to um, pre-allot them. But basically what's gonna happen is, I can already tell you that these are probably the divisions that are gonna be attacked and are going to go to the spoiled box. Um, and we'll have to make a spoiled activation. So without further ado, let's go ahead and activate our first division, which is gonna be the 96th Infantry Division, who are gonna attack across the Danube, and they have a special rule where basically they have the rubber boats, and they act as if the Danube doesn't exist for terrain purposes, so they can just move across, supply across, etc. So for Snafu, the 96th is fresh, the game specific snafu for the primary activation is a plus two on January 2nd. So that's plus three. Trains are optimal for a plus four and the um, good traffic ability because it uses tracks is a minus one, so a plus three. Um, which is just barely enough, it's a seven. So just barely enough for a full activation. And what we're going to do, we're gonna drop some objectives, obviously. And I always go kind of back and forth on this. I think we're gonna drop two objectives. We're gonna go here in this little town of Piske, and then another objective here on this town, or this village that I'm not even gonna to try to pronounce. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the 287th Infantry Regiment uh, across the river and um, attack this town. And we're going to take the 283rd Infantry Regiment to attack this town. So here we are moved, 283rd Regiment, the two battalions are ready to attack here. These two battalions, the 287th, are ready to attack here. So we'll start over here. The 96th Infantry does not have any kind of support and um, so it's not a double objective zone the fourth guards does not have prepared defense or sorry the 96 doesn't have prepared defense we are going to use our um, suppression mission we have four inherent artillery points so we use one for a suppression mission for a plus two we have an assist for plus three um, but that's it so we're at a seven the Russians are in a village, so they get a bonus for that. They have the fourth guards. Do they have? Fourth guards has support for plus one. They are not in prepared defense, um, and they are in a terrain hex for plus one, so plus two overall, so it's a seven to five. So plus two for this attack roll. Oh, that's a pretty good roll for the Germans. That's an 11. And you'll see an 11 is D1, so the defender uh, suffers one loss and a defender retreat, automatic retreat. So I'll go ahead and do that and bring you back to show you the result. So 287th Infantry Regiment moved into this town I'm not going to pronounce. The 2nd Battalion of the 4th Guards up here uh, retreated on its move side to within one of its headquarters unit. 
and now we're going to attack oh, let me activate our headquarters here now we're going to attack with the 283rd infantry regiment on this little guy here there's this is not a uh, terrain for combat so it's going to be a seven to four this time because all they get is their um, support it says plus three. Oh, <laughs> that's not good that's a five and you'll see a five is just an A1. So we lose one off the top from the first battalion and they're down to five steps. So that's gonna be the activation for the um, 96th Infantry Division. They don't have anything else going on. So we'll pick up the objective markers and now we'll roll for fatigue. So because we did an attack, it's one to three, we increase fatigue. A one, it does, so we're no longer fresh. Not the start that the 96 wanted, so they're at fatigue zero. They get a second activation on a roll of five or six. It would have been good to be fresh because then it would have been four, five, or six, but five or six, we get a second activation. Oh, we get it with a five. So we get a second activation. And now let's check out the snafu roll. We're no longer fresh. Uh, we're not mixed. Game specific is still plus two. Optimal distance for plus three. And we're using the track still for minus one, so plus two. And that's only a partial activation. So we only get to drop one objective marker and we move it half, um, half our movement allowance. So the one objective marker we're gonna drop is on this little town again. Um, we're going to attack this time with the 2nd Battalion, and it's still a 7 to 4, so plus 3. Oh boy, that was destructive. So a 9, that's a little bit better of a roll. So a 9 uh, plus 3 is 12. You'll see a 12 is a D1 and a D retreat. So I'll go ahead and fix that up and show you how it looks after the advance after combat and whatever. Okay, so the second battalion of the third guards infantry regiment um, made its retreat to the headquarters refuge on its move side, lost the step. 283rd infantry battalion uh, regiment moved into its objective hex. Uh, we're not going to move anything else for now um, since we don't have any other objective markers um, We can't really attack anything else So we'll just roll for fatigue one to three. We increase our fatigue again five. We're good No isolation nothing else we have to do for that But fourth guards is now spoiled. So remember we have to go back over to our allotment display and Put the fourth guards in the unused uh, spoiled section and they're going to have to activate this turn. But for now, it's the Russians' turn, and they get to decide um, whether they want to use their one secondary allotment and activate any unit or any division on the map, or if they want to just activate the fourth guards. Okay, so the Russian, the Soviets have two options that I can see. We can activate the fourth guards and kind of delay our turn and see what the Germans are going to do so that we can maybe activate some other unit, or we can activate the, where are they, the 18th Tank Corps. We're really spread out. So these units over here that are going to be facing the 3rd SS are out of command uh, because the 18th Tank Corps um, headquarters unit is way down here off screen and their units are spread out across the entire map. So what we could do is we could activate them bring them up into this area so that they activate before they're spoiled. And that ensures that we are likely to get a full activation. So I think that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna spend our one secondary allotment to activate the 18th Tank Corps. Now it is a minus one snafu roll for a secondary activation for the Russians. So the 18th Tank Corps is a fatigue of zero. They have minus one for the game specific snafu. Their trains are at optimal distance for a plus one. So it's a straight die roll for the snafu roll. 
and a three, that's not what they wanted. That's a partial activation. So they're gonna be moving at half movement allowance. And as a secondary activation, you don't get a second activation in your turn. So I'm gonna go ahead and move everybody and bring you back to show you where the 18th tank core ended up. Okay, so now we can see the 18th tank core, at least some of their units. We have like this ISU uh, battalion uh, a couple of tank battalions, a motorcycle battalion, or sorry, tank brigade, and they're trying to get up this road to reinforce the uh, tank core units that are up here facing the Germans. So they're trying to get up this road here um, and this road to get up into here. Um, but because we only got the partial activation, usually they'd be able to get into this area um, and really be poised for the uh, counterattack. But for now, they're gonna be a little ways away. So that's the 18th tank core activation completed. We didn't drop objective markers or anything, so they don't have to roll for fatigue. That's just their activation completed. And now we go back to the Germans who now have three secondary activations to complete. And so with our first secondary activation, we're going to go ahead and activate the third SS Panzer Division. All right, so here we're going to be activating the third SS to attack the 18th Tank Corps, basically. Let's check out our snafu roll. So the third SS is fresh for plus one. They're not coordinated or mixed or anything, but they have optimal distance trains for another plus one. So they're plus two. Secondary activation on January 2nd is a plus two, so plus four. So this is plus four on this snafu roll. Uh, a five plus four is nine, so that's a full activation. What we're gonna do is we're gonna drop our double objective marker here on the this tank brigade here so that we can bring in probably the Tigers to do a long range engagement on the tank core. And because we have good weather with four visibility, we can keep the Tiger who has a range of three outside of the engagement range of the 170th tank brigade of the Soviets. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do it to show you. So on the primary row, we get half, um, half movement. So it's half one, half two, half. So two and a half movement, we move there with our Tiger Company. And we're at a range of three. There's nothing blocking us and there's nothing in the hex that prevents us from engaging this tank brigade. And so the Tiger Company can fire on the, I guess it's probably T-34s from a range of three without them being able to fire back. So let's check out the engagement table. So they're in a double objective zone for a plus one and that's the only modifier that applies. So we have a five plus one is six, and a six minus a five. So for the Germans, we have an AV plus action rating of five, plus five is a 10, plus one is 11. On the Soviet side, we have a four plus a five is a nine, so plus two overall. Um, even though the Soviets don't get back, we just ignore the results if the Soviets inflict a loss on the Germans. So plus two is a nine, and we see target is real AV, um, target loss and retreat of for a nine or more. So basically, 170th Tank Brigade goes from, start on three steps, goes down to two steps, and it will retreat. And we follow the engagement table retreat. So retreat three hexes and flip the move side. So one, two, three, it's just going to retreat to this SU battalion. Is that right? One, two, yep. So on its move side. And now the um, Tiger Company can finish its move or do another uh, engagement. Since it's blocked by this, these trees here, it can't attack this AT battalion. So it'll probably just finish its movement here. Sorry, so I was going to attack by fire this guard unit, but he's outside of the objective zone, so we can't do that. Can't attack through this little tree, so the Tiger Company is done. 
gonna go ahead and move the rest of these guys and bring you back when there's an engagement or something interesting. So what we've done now is we moved up the 1st Battalion to the 3rd Panzer Regiment into that vacated hex, and now we have to do a stopping engagement against the AT Battalion, who has, or sorry, it's the AT Regiment, who has a limited AV of 2. And so we go to this, the engagement table. The Panzer Battalion has a AV plus AR of um, 9, plus 1 for a double objective zone is 10, versus a 6 from the AT. So a 6 plus 4 is 10. We see the target is real AV for a um, target loss and retreat. So he is down to one step, and he retreats three hexes on his move side. And we'll, I think we'll just retreat on this way through the hills. Anyway, okay, so we retreated him here. The stop engagement is clear, so we have the opportunity to continue our movement. All right, so we're going to go ahead and advance with the 1st Battalion into this little town, and we're going to engage um, these this SU regiment here at a range of 2. So the this is probably a bad idea, whatever. We're at a 9 versus an 8, and none of the engagement... Um, modifiers apply, so it's just a plus one. And an eight plus one is nine. Oh wow, they got lucky. The Germans got really lucky. So it's a target loss and retreat. So the whole stack will retreat. So the SU regiment is down to one step, retreats three on its move side, and it will retreat towards its headquarters, I think. So one, two, three, and the same thing with the tank battalion or tank brigade who retreats up the valley as well. So that's really good for the 3rd SS. That means this primary road along the Danube is wide open now, and the only thing stopping them are going to be the 4th Guards, and then further on the 10th Guards, I believe it is. So I'm going to go ahead and finish everybody's movement over here and bring you back to show you what it looks like at the end of um, the 3rd SS activation, or if they do another attack of some kind, which I don't think is likely. All right, so here's the end of the 3rd SS Panzer activation. So we moved the infantry, a couple of battalions of infantry up to butt up against the 96th Infantry Division and to take control of this little town that was right here. And we left two infantry battalions just south of Nizemli. And we left two infantry battalions just south of Nizemli here to protect this pass and this track coming down from the 18th Tank Corps. And because they're infantry units, they're going to get all the benefits of the terrain and whatnot. Uh, my only concern is leaving this um, Panzer Battalion in this town of that one, which I can't pronounce. And um, so that's going to be vulnerable to a counterattack, but I don't see how the Soviets are going to be able to reach it um, effectively. So... That's the end of the third SS Panzer. And now all we have to do is roll for fatigue. Six, no fatigue. No second activation for a secondary activation. So now it goes over to the Soviet turn. And the only thing they can activate now, since they don't have any secondary activations left, is the spoiled activation for the 4th Guards Division. So the 4th Guards Division is a fatigue of one for a minus one. Minus two for the Snafu DRM is a minus three. Their trains are optimal, however, for a plus one, so minus two overall. I believe that is it. They are not crossing any streams. They're not mixed or anything yet, so minus two. And a eight is plenty for a full activation. And I think all we're going to do is kind of rejigger our lines. We're not going to do any counterattacks. I know we might do a counterattack. Let's go ahead and do a counterattack here. I'll drop a double objective marker on that crazy town we can't pronounce, uh, which you can't see. Let me move the camera. Got excited. So we're going to drop a double objective marker on this crazy town here, and we're going to flip these guys to their 
attack side and set up for an attack. And once I have all that set up and everybody else moved, I'll bring you back. Okay, so for this attack, we're using the 2nd Battalion of 8th Guards Infantry Regiment and the 1st Battalion of the 11th Guards Infantry Regiment attacking this um, German Infantry Regiment in the town. So the 4th Guards only has a limited... Uh, it does not have red AV, basically, because that's the only... You can see down here... Um, for the appropriate support types, the attacker needs red AV, and they only have a limited AV support. So they don't get that. So they're at a three, uh, plus one for the double objective zone, plus two for the suppression is a plus three, and they get an assist for a plus four. So they're at a seven overall. The Germans are in terrain, and the 96 does not have any support. So they are, um, it contains exactly two combat units for plus one, uh, infantry and a terrain hex for plus one, so they get a plus two overall. So they're at an eight. So it's a minus one overall for this attack. So a five is just an attacker loss. So, this was the lead unit. They are down to three steps. But we do have the Germans hemmed in now, I think. We're protecting this pass with another infantry battalion. Um, so hopefully the Germans will have a tougher time on the 3rd of January. Now we roll for fatigue, no fatigue increase. So that's the 4th Guards activation complete. Okay, so play now returns to the Germans who get their next secondary activation. So they're going to activate the 5th SS Panzer Division, who is going to be attacking along this axis here through Tata, probably down into this valley here because there's a German objective at the base of this valley. So while the 3rd SS goes towards the north, 5th SS is going to go through here and cut to the south probably, and hopefully cutting off some of these units. Um, from the 18th Tank Corps. But first we have to get through Tata. Uh, let's see what kind of activation we get on the snafu table. So this is a plus two DRM for January 2nd. Fifth SS is fresh for plus three. Trains are optimal for plus four and no other DRMs apply. So it's a plus four on this die roll. Oop. So that's plenty enough for a full activation. The 13. And now we get to drop our objective marker. We're gonna drop a double objective marker here, I think, on this hex, because that with that two hex radius, that puts all these units within a double objective zone. And I think that's a good start to uh, our campaign for the 5th SS. So first what we're gonna do is move the second um, Panzer Battalion to here, I believe. We're gonna cross the Tatai River, and now we're gonna to have to do a um, we're gonna do a engagement on the support. We don't have to do a stopping engagement because the uh, red AV is in support and it's not a real, it's not a real red AV unit. So we don't have to do a stopping engagement and it's not standoff. However, we are gonna to try to do our um, engagement here to drop their support. We're gonna, we have a five plus four is a nine, plus one for the double objective zone for a 10. On, this, on the Soviet side, we have an AR of three, plus the three of the AT regiment. Um, so a six, so it's a plus four on this die roll. And that's an 11. An 11 when the target of support is target loss and drop. So the AT regiment loses a step, and now that stack loses its support. Um, and now this is one of those places where I'm not completely sure on the rules. Even though we only attacked one of the two supports that this unit had, I believe since we dropped the support on one, the entire stack loses all of its support. Um, so I, at least I'm now counting this stack as not having any support, even though we only successfully attacked one of the two supports, if that makes sense. Anyway, that keeps the game flowing for me. 
Um, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but now we're going to go ahead and do a shock attack against this Soviet battalion. So the 2nd Battalion, 2nd Panzer Battalion has an AV, sorry, an action rating of 5. Plus 1 for the dual support because the 5th SS has a Yacht Panzer Battalion support. Plus 1 for the double objective zone. Plus 1 for a shock attack suppression mission. And shock attack AV unit is hard, a, uh, hard AV for plus 1. So 1, so plus 4 overall is a 9. On the Soviet side we start with a 3. They don't have any support. They're in prepared defense. There's no terrain and nothing else applies, so they're at a four. So it's a plus five overall on this shock attack from 2nd Panzer Battalion. So it's a 10. A 10 on the combat table is attacker suffers one losses since he has prepared defense and the defender suffers one step loss because he's in prepared defense. So not ideal whatsoever. Okay, so next we moved up the, um, is this the 3rd Battalion and 9th Panzer Grenadier Regiment in Tatata. And we're gonna use them to assist the 5th Armored Recon, Panzer Recon Battalion to attack this Soviet battalion here. So with five action rating, we have, um, it's a dual unit, so plus one, double objective zone for another plus one, plus two for a regular attack suppression mission, plus one for support. So we have three, four, plus five overall, so a 10 for the Germans. On the Soviet side, we have a three. We have a appropriate support for four, prepared defense for five, and they are in terrain for six. So it is a plus four overall on this attack. And that's not what the Germans wanted either. So it's a seven, eight, nine is an attacker loss and defender step loss as well. And so we're really starting to see the impact that um, prepared defense has on this. So now I think what we're going to have to do is try to get a unit in here to attack this guard unit. So we pause it and see what I can come up with. Okay, so now what we've done is we brought the 2nd Battalion of the 9th Panzer Grenadier Motorized Regiment, whatever you want to call them, and the 1st Battalion of 5th Panzer Regiment into this hex here, north of Tata, and we're going to use the Panzer Regiment supported by the infantry to attack this unit. So it's going to be a lot of the same modifiers, but let me just run through it again and I'll tell you what we come up with. So because there's no terrain in this hex, it's a 10 to five. So it's a plus five on this die roll for the Germans. And that's an 11. That's a D1 and D retreat. So prepared defense doesn't affect this outcome. So they just suffer one step loss and retreat. And I'll go ahead and take care of that and bring you back to show you what it looks like. So it was able to retreat uh, at least three hexes and end within one hex of the headquarters unit so it just plopped itself on the headquarters unit as the headquarters refuge. This stack now advances after combat into here. That kind of opens up a nice little breakthrough for the Germans to exploit and try to zoom in to attack the headquarters unit. Let's see if we can um, get that done. So I, I definitely bungled this a little bit. Probably should have done this attack first, broken through, and then I could have exploited the breakthrough with the Panzer Recon or some of these other more mobile units. But I didn't, so the German, or sorry, the Soviets will have a chance to regroup and close this gap off. But um, that's what happens when you record, you get strategically done. So that's the 5th SS Panzer's turn complete. We just consolidated our hold on Tata ready to exploit that breakthrough, hopefully, if the Soviets can't close it. So now we just roll for fatigue. A four means we have no fatigue increase, and we don't get a secondary activation for, sorry, we don't get a second activation for a secondary allotment. That's confusing, I know. But 5th SS is now done for the 2nd of January. So now since the Soviets don't have any secondary allotments left, the only thing they can do is activate their spoil division which is the 80th Guards, since they got attacked by the 5th SS Panzer. 
So they have a snafu of minus two for being spoiled. The 80th guards is a fatigue of one for another minus one. They're not mixed or anything, and their MSR does not use tracks. So it's a minus three, plus one for the optimal trains for minus two again. So it's just minus two overall. Oh boy, that was an ugly die roll. Wow, okay, so that's a failed activation. So all we get to do on a failed activation is not much. We get to flip things. So just a reminder, uh, failure activation, you can flip units, um, you can move combat trains, remove drop support and traffic markers, apply isolation. And just um, to clarify, so this probably should have been a temporary drop support because it's from an engagement. Um, and now though, there's no safe path because as far as I can tell, because even with the red AV, these two red AV units project a zone of control into the safe path hexes for them. So we can't get the red AV support back to that battalion. So that support is dropped until we can clear up the, um, maybe we move a Soviet unit into here to create the safe path or something. And I also should have mentioned, I think I missed this um, in my excitement for these engagements, but on the engagement table, um, don't forget for the target, you get prepared defense or multiple supports, you get a plus one DRM. And I think I missed that in some of these. So if I did, I apologize, but I'm just gonna stick with it for now. So anyway, on to the failed activation for the um, 80th guards. So we do have some isolation to take care of. Um, this battalion is isolated because there's no safe path. Um, these ox are not negated. So we look on the isolation table. So stack does not have a safe path, but it is in command radius. MSR is not blocked, so it just loses one step. And this is why we have those spoil, um, sp mandatory spoiled activations, so that these divisions have to do um, an activation and check for isolation. Nobody else is isolated as far as I can tell. And so that concludes the, well, might as well flip this guy over. Um, that concludes the 80th guards activation. We don't need to do a, a fatigue. And now the Germans get one more secondary activation, and it's probably gonna be Kampf Group of Pape down here a little bit to the south. So Pape's role in Operation Conrad is to take this town, which again, or the city, I guess, which I'm not even gonna try to pronounce. I mean, I will. Tata Banya. It's my best Hungarian. So his objective is to take Tata Banya and Felsgogala, these two towns here, which is going to be hard because the Soviet infantry gets some crazy modifiers for being in cities. Um, and Pape has a lot of armored units, which don't exactly do great in terrain. So let's see what he can get up to now. I'm going to um, well, first we'll start his snafu roll, I should say. So, Pape is a fatigue of zero. He gets a um, plus two DRM for his snafu for January 2nd. He's optimal distance for a plus three. No tracks or anything. So, it's a plus three overall for Pape. Um, and that's a 10. I'm sorry, that's a nine. She's math today. And um, it's a full activation either way. So we get to drop a double objective, and I think we'll just drop one here. So that'll cover all of these units here, um, but it won't cover these two up here. But we're not going to be driving that way. We're going to be trying to drive this way and cutting off those units. So let me go ahead and move everybody and see what I come up with. Okay, so first we're moving in this stack which is the 1st Battalion 98th Panzer Grenadier Regiment and the 1st Battalion of the 26th Panzer Regiment which is only on one step so that's not great. 
But we're gonna try first, we're gonna use the Panzer um, Battalion to attack, and try to drop the support for this Soviet battalion here. And the problem is, um, again, 34th Guards is in prepared defense, so we can't use our range to the best effect here, um, unfortunately. And I'm actually going to flip these all to their, well, he's already on his, so we're going to flip him in there. Um, so for the engagement, we have an AV plus AR of uh, 9, plus 1 for the double objective zone for 10 for the Germans, 3, and the 34th Guards have... A, what do they have? They have an AT regiment with a 3 AV. So that's a 6 plus 1 is 7 for the prepared defense or, and or multiple supports. Um, 10 minus 7 is a 3, so plus 3 overall. So it's an 8 target drop, so they're a temporary drop support. And now the Panzer Grenadiers are going to attack that hex with the support of the panzers. So they're at a action rating of four. They have support, I believe. Pape has a Yak Panzer battalion in support for plus one. Double objective zone for plus two. We're going to use the one inherent artillery point for plus two, so plus four overall. Plus one for the assist is plus five. So we're at a nine. And the Soviets are start at a three. They're in prepared defense for a four. There is no, oh boy. There's no hex train in this hex or hex side train. As I get everything back together. So it's a plus five for this die roll. So a 10 overall is not what we wanted. It's an attacker loss and a defender loss because they're in prepared defense. So we're going to do the same thing with the 2nd Battalion, 114th Panzer Grenadier Regiment and the 1st Battalion, 11th Panzer Regiment. Attacking this Soviet Guards Battalion, which is in the town of Panheda, something. Uh, so we're going to try to drop the support first. So we have a 5 plus 4 is 9, again plus 1 is 10, and the Soviets are 3 plus 3, 6 plus 1 is 7, so it's a plus 3 on this engagement roll. Doesn't matter where I go, I always hit stuff. So, um, so it's on 11, so we have a target loss and drop. So the AT regiment goes down to 1 step. And the support is dropped. And now the Panzer Grenadiers are going to attack. So we have um, four action rating. They have the support, so plus one. Double objectives in is plus two. We're going to use one of our air points for a suppression mission for plus two again, so plus four overall. We're assisted by the Panzers for plus five. On the Soviet side, we're at a three, plus one for prepared defense for four. So it's a plus five overall on this die roll. Oh boy, and the Germans are gonna need every help they can get on that one. So it's an eight. Attacker loses one, defender loses one. Oh wait, sorry. There's also the town hex, so it should have just been a plus four, so a seven, but seven is the same result, sorry. So it's still, everybody loses a step, but forgot there was a little town there. So the Soviets held strong thanks to the prepared defense. Now Kampf Group of Pape doesn't really have much else to do. We have the 1st Battalion, 130th Panzer Regiment up here. We could, I think we're just going to move him down one, two, three, four to here. These units are outside the objective zone, so we can't really do much against them. 
can't do an engagement because there's no real AV in those hexes. So yeah, I think that's the Conf Group of Pape's activation. Now we just have to check for fatigue. A three means we increase our fatigue and Pape is now fatigue of one. So now we activate the 34th guards because they had they were spoiled by Pape. And if we look on the Safu chart, so 34th guards has a fatigue of one. They are spoiled for minus two, so minus three overall. They're not mixed and their um, trains are optimal, so plus one, so minus two overall for this die roll. And that's plenty for a full activation. Now, I don't think we're going to drop any objective markers. I think we're just going to consolidate a little bit. So, okay, so all we've done is we've moved this battalion out from reserves in the city onto the front line. We move one battalion from here onto the front line in that Banhilla village. We move the battalion that was here to join the other battalion in that village that I'm not going to try to pronounce. So we've consolidated our line a little bit. Um, we're not going to drop an objective marker, even though doing so would allow us to do a bombardment action. So yeah, um, maybe we should have dropped because we have one inherent uh, arty point and we have a whole boatload of um, air points, but oh well. Um, at least this way we don't have to roll for fatigue. So. That's the Soviet turn done. Don't need to roll for fatigue, like I said. And um, yeah, so that's turn one for Panzer's Last Stand, Operation Conrad 1 completed. Let me zoom out and show you the state of things at the end of turn one. So here's where most of the action is. Of course, we have the Panzer divisions. A lot of success up here with the 3rd SS Panzer Division. A little bit of success down here with the 5th SS Panzer Division. We would have liked to have had more. I should have done it a little bit differently to allow the breakthrough into this valley here. Pape in the south didn't have much success. He's being stonewalled by prepared defense, infantry and prepared defense. Um, the Germans are going to want to punch through um, the 4th Guards sooner rather than later. But next turn, the Soviets are going to have a lot more primary activations and secondary activations which will allow them to organize their defense a little bit more because right now we kind of caught them off on the back foot and um, that's not going to last forever. So next turn, expect more of the same from the Germans and a little bit more of an organized defense from the Russians. But anyway, that's it for turn one. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments what rules I missed or goofed on. I'm sure I made some. Um, it's inevitable when I play these games, but I think I caught at least caught some of the rules goofs um, so hopefully um, I won't be called out too much in the comments, but if you do see them Let me know so I can fix it for the next turn Anyway, that's it for turn one. Thanks for watching catch you on the battlefield in the next one